Hello and welcome back to our novel study of the Phantom Tollbooth. This is Chapter 18, Castle in the Air. I know you've waited a long time to get here and you're anxious to get to the castle in the air. However, we do have another demon to meet before that happens. So here's how this chapter is going to work. We're going to stop halfway through, discuss the demon, and then we're going to just continue the chapter all the way to the end and we'll talk about that afterward. Let's get right to it. Chapter 18, Castle in the Air. Higher and higher they climbed, in search of the castle and the two banished princesses, from one crest to the next, from jagged rock to jagged rock, up frightful crumbling cliffs and along desperately narrow ledges where a single misstep meant only goodbye. An ominous silence dropped like a curtain around them, and, except for the scuffling of their frantic footsteps, there wasn't a sound. The world that Milo knew was a million thoughts away, and the demons, the demons were there, in the distance. They're gaining, shouted the humbug, wishing he'd never looked back. But there it is, cried Milo at the same instant, for, straight ahead, Climbing up from atop the highest peak was a spidery spiral stair, and at the other end stood the castle in the air. I see it! I see it! said the happy bug as they struggled up the twisting mountain trail. But what he didn't see was that, curled up right in front of the first step, was a little round man in a frock coat, sleeping peacefully on a very large and well-worn ledger. A long quill pen sat precariously behind his ear. There were ink stains all over his hands and face, as well as his clothing, and he wore a pair of the thickest eyeglasses that Milo had ever seen. Be very careful, whispered Tok when they'd finally reached the top, and the humbug stepped gingerly around and started up the stairs. Names, the little man called out briskly, just as the startled bug reached the first step. He sat up quickly, pulled the book out from under him, put on a green eye shade, and waited with his pen poised in the air. Well, I, stammered the bug. Names, he cried again, and as he did, he opened the book to page 512 and began to write furiously. The quill made horrible scratching noises, and the point, which was continually catching in the paper, flicked tiny ink blots all over him. As they called out their names, he noted them carefully in alphabetical order. Splendid, 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 he muttered to himself. I haven't had an N in ages. What do you want our names for? asked Milo, looking anxiously over his shoulder. We're in a bit of a hurry. Oh, this won't take a minute, the man assured them. I'm the official senses taker, and I must have some information before I can take your senses. Now, if you'll just tell me when you were born, where you were born, why you were born, how old you are now, how old you were then, how old you'll be in a little while, your mother's name, your father's name, your aunt's name, your uncle's name, your cousin's name, where you live, how long you've lived there, the schools you've attended, the schools you haven't attended, your hobbies, your telephone number, your shoe size, shirt size, collar size, hat size and the names and addresses of six people who can verify all this information. We'll get started. One at a time, please. Stand in line, and no pushing, no talking, no peeking. The humbug, who had difficulty remembering anything, went first. The little man leisurely recorded each answer in five different places pausing only to polish his glasses, clear his throat, straighten his tie, and blow his nose. 
he managed also to cover the distressed bug from head to foot in ink. Next, he announced very officially. I do wish he'd hurry, said Milo, stepping forward, for in the distance he could see the first of the demons already beginning to scale the mountain toward them, no more than a few minutes away. The little man wrote with painful deliberation, finally finished with both Milo and Tuck, and looked up happily. May we go now? asked the dog, whose sensitive nose had picked up a loathsome, evil smell that grew stronger every second. By all means, said the man agreeably. Just as soon as you finish telling me your height, your weight, the number of books you read each year, the number of books you don't read each year, the amount of time you spend eating, playing, working, and sleeping every day, where you go on vacations, how many ice cream cones you eat in a week, how far it is from your house to the barber shop, and which is your favorite color. Then, after that, please fill out these forms and applications, three copies of each, and be careful, for if you make one mistake, you'll have to do them all over again. Oh, dear, said Milo, looking at the pile of papers. We'll never finish these. And even as he spoke, the demons swarmed stealthily up the mountain. Come, come, said the census taker, chuckling gaily to himself. Don't take all day. I'm expecting several more visitors any minute now. They set to work feverishly on the difficult forms, and when they'd finished, Milo placed them all in the little man's lap. He thanked them politely, took off his eye shade, put the pen behind his ear, closed the book, and went back to sleep. The humbug took one horrified look back over his shoulder and quickly started up the stairs. Destination! shouted the census taker, sitting up again, putting on his eye shade, taking the pen from behind his ear, and opening his book. But I thought, protested the astonished bug, destination, he repeated, making several notations in the ledger. The castle in the air, said Milo impatiently. Why bother, said the census taker, pointing into the distance. I'm sure you'd rather see what I have to show you. As he spoke, they all looked up, but only Milo could see the gay and exciting circus there on the horizon. There were tents and sideshows and rides and even wild animals, everything a little boy could spend hours watching. And wouldn't you enjoy a more pleasant aroma? He said, turning to talk. Almost immediately, the dog smelled a wonderful smell that no one but he could smell. It was made up of all the marvelous things that had ever delighted his curious nose. And here's something I know you'll enjoy hearing, he assured the humbug. The bug listened with rapt attention to something he alone could hear, the shouts and applause of an enormous crowd, all cheering for him. They each stood as if in a trance, looking, smelling, and listening to the very special things that the senses taker had provided for them, forgetting completely about where they were going and who, with evil intent, was coming up behind them. The senses taker sat back with a satisfied smile on his puffy little face as the demons came closer and closer, until Less than a minute separated them from their hopeless victims. But Milo was too engrossed in the circus to notice, and Tak had closed his eyes, the better to smell, and the bug, bowing and waving, stood with a look of sheer bliss on his face, interested only in the wild ovation. The little man had done his work well, and, except for some ominous crawling noises just below the crest of the mountain, everything was again silent. Milo, who stood staring blankly into the distance, 
let his bag of gifts slip from his shoulder to the ground. And as he did, the package of sounds broke open, filling the air with peals of happy laughter, which seemed so gay that first he, then Tuck, and finally the humbug joined in. And suddenly, the spell was broken. There is no circus, cried Milo, realizing he'd been tricked. There were no smells, barked Tuck, his alarm now ringing furiously. The applause is gone, complained the disappointed humbug. I warned you, I warned you I was the census taker, sneered the census taker. I help people find what they're not looking for, hear what they're not listening for, run after what they're not chasing and smell what isn't even there. And furthermore, he cackled, hopping around gleefully on his stubby legs, I'll steal your sense of purpose, take your sense of duty, destroy your sense of proportion, and, but for one thing, you'd be helpless yet. What's that? asked Milo fearfully. As long as you have the sound of laughter, he groaned unhappily, I cannot take your sense of humor. And with it, you've nothing to fear from me. But what about them? cried the terrified bug, for at that very instant, the other demons had reached the top at last and were leaping forward to seize them. They ran for the stairs, bowling over the disconsolate census taker, ledger, ink bottle, eye shade, and all, as they went. The humbug dashed up first, then Tok, and lastly Milo, almost too late as a scaly arm brushed his shoe. Take a pause. Okay, the census taker. First thing you should know is that his name is actually a pun. There are two words, senses and census, and let's start with census, which is a noun. That's an official count or survey of a population, typically recording various details of individuals. Here in the United States, we conduct a national census every 10 years, and that's where they try and count and get information on every single person who lives in this country. So he's a census taker in the sense that he is recording all of this information about travelers in order to let them move forward. But he's literally the senses taker, and you know that your senses are faculties by which the body perceives an external stimulus or an internal sensation, as in sight, sound, touch, taste, hearing, and so on, which we'll get to in a minute. But there's a main idea with the senses taker here, and the main idea is that too much bureaucracy can slow or prevent the accomplishment of a task or goal. So let's define bureaucracy. That is administration characterized by excessive red tape and routine. By red tape, we just mean forms you have to fill out, questions you have to answer, all kinds of things that you have to do in order to get something done. And redundant which didn't come up in the chapter, but it's a good word to know. Anything that's redundant is, means that it's repeated unnecessarily and not useful. And you'll notice that the census taker asks a lot of redundant questions from Milo Tak and the Humbug. All right, his characteristics. He's an old man with glasses, a green visor, leaky ink quill, and a big ledger. A ledger is a giant book in which you record information. He delays travelers by asking questions and requiring forms. And he also distracts your literal senses with illusions of sight, sound, smell, etc. And he also steals figurative senses. So let's talk about the difference between literal senses and figurative senses. Okay, so your literal senses can be divided into external and internal. The external ones you're pretty familiar with. I've given you the scientific names for them. So the olfactory sense is smell, the gustatory sense is taste, somatosensory is touch, auditory is hearing, visual is vision, 
And vestibular is your balance, your sense of balance. Then we also have senses that are internal. They're controlled by the brain and they regulate internal systems of our body. Those are things like proprioception, which is the sense of movement and the relative position of your parts of the body. There's nociception, which is physiological pain, your sense of pain. There's hunger, which is a sense for energy balance, so that when you're hungry, you know that you need food, you need more energy. And there's interoceptions, which are all these various other senses that are stimulated within the body. So for example, temperature, digestion, blood pressure, heartbeat, swallowing, gagging, and vomiting, and of course, excreting waste are all different kinds of internal senses. Non-human senses, senses that animals have that we don't. So there's magnetoception, which is the ability to detect location based on the Earth's magnetic field. And birds, bees, and cattle can do this. There's electroreception, which is the ability to detect electrical fields. Certain fish, sharks, rays, dolphins, and spiders can detect electrical fields. And there's echolocation, which is the ability to determine your orientation to other objects by using reflected sound. You know that bats have echolocation, but also whales and dolphins do as well. Then there's infrared sensing, which is the ability to sense infrared thermal radiation. So basically heat. We can't see infrared radiation. That's beyond our eyes ability, but snakes can actually see infrared radiation. And even plants have their own unique abilities for sensing the environment. So those are the literal senses. But we said that the senses taker also takes figurative senses. And he says, I'll take your sense of purpose, which is what you're meant to accomplish in life. I'll take your sense of duty, which is what you have promised to accomplish. And I'll take your sense of proportion, which is the ability to differentiate the relationship between things like size and shape. But there's one figurative sense that he can't take, and that's your sense of humor, which is your ability to laugh and or appreciate humor. There are also other examples of figurative senses, like a sense of wonder is your ability to remain curious, ask questions, and seek answers. Your sense of compassion which is the desire to love all living creatures and to help those in need. Common sense, which is practical, obvious, and everyday knowledge that's necessary to survive and thrive in the real world. There's also a moral sense, which is your sense of right and wrong and good and evil. And then there's something called street sense, which is how to stay safe out there in society, to interact respectfully with others, to avoid conflict and danger, and how to serve others in the community. Finally, there's your sense of nonsense, the ability to tell when something is false, misleading, illogical, or absurd. So the senses taker takes not only your literal senses, but he takes your figurative senses as well. And by asking questions and making you fill out forms, he also takes a census, C-E-N-S-U-S. Okay, the lessons to learn from the census taker are that do not allow yourself to be easily distracted from completing necessary tasks. Too much bureaucracy can slow or prevent the accomplishment of a task or goal. And your senses provide your brain with constant, endless information about the world as you experience it in every single moment. Okay, there are two sets of important details. So the first set of important details is that the census taker delays Milo Talk and the Humbug by asking them a series of questions and making them fill out multiple forms. Then he distracts each of the three characters. He distracts Milo with an exciting circus on the horizon. That's a visual distraction. He distracts Talk with a wonderful aroma made up of all the smells that delighted his curious nose. So that's an olfactory distraction. And he distracts the humbug with an enormous crowd that's cheering just for him. That's an auditory distraction. And then the second group of important details 
is that Milo lets that bag of gifts slip off his shoulder. The package of sounds breaks open, filling the air with happy laughter, and it breaks the spell that the census taker put on them. The census taker cannot steal a sense of humor as long as there's laughter around. All right, let's.